In early July, a giant iceberg roughly the size of Delaware broke off of the Larsen Ice Shelf in the Antarctic. Thank you, climate change! Now, this isn't expected to really raise sea levels because this giant iceberg had already been floating in water before it broke off, but it does mean that the glaciers behind it on land might melt and flow faster, and that is bad news. Why is this relevant to the book I'm reviewing today? Well, that's kind of what The Sands of Sarasvati by Risto Esomaki is about. The Sands of Sarasvati begins when a Russian submarine operator is invited to go to India, to the Gulf of Cambay, to investigate an ancient underwater city, which I have to interject here, is based on a real finding from 2000, though it seems that the extent of the archaeological ruins and their pristine quality are exaggerated somewhat in this fictional story. Characters begin to wonder what could have caused sea levels to rise so dramatically and so quickly as to drown this city and perhaps many others, and the evidence starts to point towards mega tsunamis. And then they discover that the ice shelf in Greenland is melting at a much faster rate than they had expected, and that may cause a mega tsunami now. Now, when I say mega tsunami, I don't mean something on the scale of like the 2004 Indian Ocean Boxing Day tsunami. I mean something 10 times as bad as that. This book hooked me more with its ideas than with its plot, to be honest. Um, it felt like it was paced like a thriller, like a movie, in fact, and it has some very um, visually interesting scenes in it that I could visualize like I was watching a movie. There are these cuts between characters in um, very different locations in different climates, like from Finland to India to Greenland, and those were also like really easy for me to see in my mind. And there's also this like rushed compressed passage of time that would probably work better in a movie where you would have like montages and that kind of thing doesn't work so well in a written story. The second half of this book reads I think more like an argument for stopping or preventing the melting of the the ice sheets and the glaciers in Greenland and in the Antarctic before it's too late, before it causes this terrible type of destruction that might end civilization. And this is why I read climate science fiction, why I read books like this, because the ideas are enjoyable, they're scarily plausible, they make me think, and really in the case of The Sands of Sarasvati, reading it at the right time, it was incredibly relevant to the world I actually live in when I heard the news about the Larsen Ice Shelf. I do want to talk about some of the weaknesses of this book because it wasn't perfect even if it was fun. Uh, the first problem is that the passage of time is not implied very well. Uh, there are some things occurring, some activities that have to take place that must have taken quite a bit of time, but that isn't implied, that isn't described, and so it ended up feeling like certain things were too rushed or came out of left field and it wasn't realistic. The second thing, which is probably the, the worst thing actually, it's, it's going to be noticed by everybody, is that uh, this book needed better editing. It needed better copy editing. Um, clearly I haven't read this in the original finish, I've only read the English translation, and I think that the translation itself uh, was pretty good. Um, I've heard from somebody who read the Finnish version that some of the problems I noticed with the writing were reflected in, in the Finnish version as well, but in particular um, there were just a lot of punctuation mistakes, missing words, and a lot of missing end quotes. It really needed uh, a couple more passes of editing to catch those mistakes because there were far too many of them for a professionally published work. Now, despite being cosmetically rough, um, I do really recommend this. I think it's highly readable and it'll really appeal to people who enjoy climate uh, science fiction and people who like like doomsday type movies, things like 2012 or The Day After Tomorrow, which I have seen, I'm a little bit ashamed to say because they weren't good movies at all. Um, but this is a far better story, um, much more based on scientific fact, with a, a better plot, honestly, than those movies are. I mean, I just enjoy that 
it is plausible in some ways, scary, perhaps a little bit exaggerated, but um, more plausible than the science you see in a lot of movies. It has a more international feel to it than some of the other um, climate science fiction I've read before, and I really appreciated that. I This is one of the reasons why I've enjoyed reading um, works in translation so much this year, is that it's truly a different perspective on the world and the global impact that climate change and things like that have. It's not just about the U.S., you know? <laughs> um, and as a last note, if you want to read this book, I'm not sure about the ebook availability, but I do know that the English translation, this physical edition, um, is available directly from the Finnish publisher's website, which is where I bought it. They, they do ship internationally, but I'm not aware of any online retailers that uh, sell it. If you know of one, let me know because some people may not want to uh, find a translation of the website in order to order it. I'm certainly glad that I read this book and I really look forward to reading uh, more of Isomaki's work that's been translated into English. I have Lithium 6 on my list next. So yeah, Sands of Sarasvati, a good book, though it has some flaws. If you've read this in Finnish or in English, um, I'd love to talk to you about it. And if you've read anything else by Isomaki that you want to recommend, I would like to know that as well. So there you go. Um, that is it for this review. Thank you very much for watching, and I will talk to you again soon. And until then, bye.